everyone. Hi. Can you all hear me okay? Yes. Just have a few short announcements. Uh, this session has been approved for the following CE credits. In New Jersey, three elective and three appraisal. In New York, three real estate and three appraisal. For Pennsylvania, three real estate, no appraisal. If you wish to receive CE credit, please make sure that you had your badge scanned when you came in this morning. You must attend the entire session, which runs until noon, to receive your credit. You also have to have your badge scanned when you leave at noon. If you should have to exit the room for an emergency, you will also need to have your badge scanned when you leave and when you come back in. The speaker, uh, as I'm aware, um, will probably not be taking any scheduled breaks. If you need to leave, again, just make sure that you have your badge scanned. Um, if your badge was not able to be scanned, we have a piece of paper out there for you to sign in and out of. You can check downstairs at the registration desk and they will get you a new badge for free. Uh, if you are a Pennsylvania licensee who was licensed on or after December 1st of 2016, you are required to take specific mandatory classes which are not being offered here this year. All electronic devices, please, should be set to silent or turned off during the session. And please uh, try and refrain from leaving the room to check messages or take calls during the program. This session is being recorded. Recordings in different formats are available at the convention audio recording booth in the convention registration area on the second floor. <coughs> we'll the, the, uh, the announcement. Your speaker today is Doug Barrow. He is the director of the New York School of Real Estate. Since 1998, he has trained thousands of loan officers and real estate agents around the country. He has trained for companies such as Countrywide, Capital One, Wells Fargo, Morgan Stanley, Exit Realty, Staten Island Board of Realtors, the Brooklyn Board of Realtors, the Bronx Board of Realtors, and countless other organizations. He has been called an entertainer by many of his students. He weaves fun and learning into a great experience, and he has authored Credit Smart as well as a full <coughs> loan loan officer training boot camp. Please help me in welcoming your trainer today, Doug Barrow. Thank you, Leah. Thank you, Leah. Thank you very much. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. All right, that was fairly weak. How many people here ever been Brooklyn, lived in Brooklyn, five boroughs, even southern Jersey, the same way? I travel all over the country doing trainings, and I start my classes the same way every single time we're going to do it Brooklyn style. I'm going to say, how you doing? And nice and loud, I want everybody, lots of attitude this morning. Go like this with your two fingers, go, how you doing? You ready? How you doing? How you doing? I. You know, most people think all Italians are in the mafia, but I'm here to tell you that's not true. That's because most of us are in the witness protection program. All right? All right, look. I've been training for a long time. I got into training by accident. I started out as a loan officer about 20 years ago. After selling all my businesses and everything, I got into the lending business. And uh, I became a manager in about six months. I'm doing loans, and the guys are coming to me and asking me questions. I became the manager of the office. And what I learned in short order was that in the morning, you would come to me first thing in the morning, and you'd ask me, Doug, how do you do loan to value? 10 minutes later, you'd ask me the same question. 10 minutes later, you, and I get the same questions all day long. The problem is not that I'm getting questions. The problem is that's the wrong question to be asking. The question that should be being asked was, I have somebody that's got an LTV of 84%. What do I do? That's the right question. It's the same as if I asked you guys, do me a favor. Would you drive over to the Borgata and pick something up for me? Do I have to teach you guys where the gas pedal is and the brake is? No, you should know those things, the fundamental things, right? So you're just going to ask me maybe directions or something. So I put together a training course for one week for all my loan officers. I taught them how to do the calculator, how to do loan to value, debt to income, all of that kind of stuff. And we became the number one branch in short order. And so the company that was headquartered in Florida, I was working at Americ Long Island. They asked me if I would come down there and start a training and education department for them, which we did. And we went from 78 loan offices to 200 loan offices just in the Tampa area alone. And by buying a telemarketing system and doing all of these kind of things, we went from $10 million a month to $130 million a month in about a year. So we did really well. The training came to me by accident. I, I train the way I like to be trained. So I run a very 
highly interactive class. You guys can ask questions. You don't have to raise your hand. Just yell it out. It's all good. My classes are like that for a long time. I have a class this afternoon about how to qualify your borrower tomorrow morning about credit. So if you like today's class, you want to come back and see me train on those things, uh, fantastic. Now, two things. Show of hands. How many people here uh, are appraisers? I know there's a few that are here. Fantastic. In the back. Uh, I heard somebody say uh, that you do BPOs, right? How many people do BPOs? So you learn a little bit about what's going on here, even though this is not a BPO class. I'm going to hand out in a little while about six pages of an appraisal report. We're not going to read everything that's in there. First thing I'm going to do, I'm going to talk 30,000 foot view. We're going to talk a little bit about appraisals. We're going to find out what you guys know. Then I'm going to hand out the appraisal reports that I've been using for many years. I promise you that you'll learn at least a half a dozen things about appraisals that you didn't know before. There's no way you're walking out of here knowing everything there is to know about appraisals. No way. Not, not, what are we here till one o'clock, right? All right, 12 o'clock, just checking. You guys know, right? All right. So here's the deal. I'm a very casual guy. I like making sure that people learn. Transference of knowledge is an important thing. Ask questions. The doors are closed but not locked. So if you need to make a phone call or something for five minutes, you can go outside. It's okay. You're not going to kill anything. Got to go to the bathroom. Go outside. But don't be gone for half an hour because they'll, they'll, you know, they know what's going on. over. There. Fair enough? So I'll be uh, calling on you guys. So let's just take a pulse and see where we're at. So you sat in a great spot, so I'm going to pick on this guy. Hi, how are you? I'm good. How you What's your name? Will. Will, all right. I'm going to go down this line, Will. Tell us one thing that you know about appraisals. Thing that I know Anything. About. You can say, I know nothing about appraisals. You can say, I think it's this. Um, we, need a, we need the appraisal to match the offer so that we can move forward towards the closing. You need the appraisal to match the closing. Otherwise, you can't move forward. Is that true? It's not a true statement. How long are you in the business, if you don't mind me asking? Uh, about three years now. Three years? Okay. So you're going to learn. It does not have to come in the same, all right? So let me ask you guys a couple of questions. In a purchase transaction, oh, by the way, I want to make this statement because this is really true. I've been in the business a long time, almost 20 years now, and I remember there was a time when we used to be able to talk to the appraisers directly, the good old days. I need 600000 on that house, right? I flew to California to do a training for Ditech.com. And I sat next to a guy that was an appraiser on the appraisal board. We just started talking. He says, Doug, in about a year or two, you're not, you're not going to be allowed to talk to us anymore. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, that's what he's telling me. We talked for about an hour. He says, they're going to change this, they're going to change that. I go, really? They're going to make all those changes? Well, let me tell you something. If you're not sure about appraisers, I ask this question first when I teach real estate agents and loan officers. If I was to ask you guys on a scale of 1 to 10, where do you place yourself and where do you place loan officers, what do you think most real estate agents say? We're here and loan officers are here. But if I ask the loan officer that question, what do they say? <laughs> We're here and you're here. It really, how should it be? should be like this. And you know who else should be like that? The appraiser. But the appraiser is an independent third party, right? They're supposed to be watching what goes on, right? So. I'm talking to him. He says, all these changes are going to happen. I said, okay, great. Here's the deal. I don't know of any loans that I've ever done. Now, there are some loans out there, streamlines, where you don't need to do a full appraisal. You can do a drive-by or something like that. But for the most part, on purchases, you need to have an appraisal report done. At least we do as a lender. Fair enough, right? You guys get appraisals done on everything? After today's class, I promise you, if you think an appraiser's job is an easy job, if you don't think it really matters, oh, what's the big deal? They don't know what they're doing. You are going to have a newfound respect for appraisers. Are you with me? I'm not kidding you. I don't know how they make money on $450. Because most of you, watch this. Hi, what's your name? Lori. Lori? Mm -hmm. Hi, Lori. How long do you think an appraiser works on an appraisal? Uh, I would say probably 20, 15, 20 hours. 15, 20 hours, okay, that's, that's a much better guess. I thought she was going to say 15 to 20 minutes because I usually hear a half an hour, 45 minutes. There's a lot of stuff. There's a lot of stuff that goes on behind the scenes that you guys don't see. They think they come in, they, they measure the room, and, and they're done. Not true. And today, because we have to call an appraisal service, and then they use somebody that's on their staff, they're not getting paid the full 375 or 450 on that deal. 
they're getting half of that probably or whatever percentage they get on that. So you're going to find some of the things that they do today and we're going to ask some of the people that are in the audience that know about appraisals to fill in for us. Fair enough? Because I know a lot but I don't know everything and you know what? You might as well learn. Tell us one thing you know about appraisals, sir. Some appraisers are working areas they're unfamiliar with. That happens. What are you going to do? You know, you're in Staten Island, you got five appraisers and you got 200 appraisers that need to be done. You're going to call somebody from outside. But they're professionals. By the way, when you guys got your license, how many hours did you need to take? Some of you 40 hours, right? Some of you 75 hours? Now, I could be wrong, but I think to be an appraiser, you need like 250 hours as an apprentice. Appraisers in the back. Am I close? I think it was 2,000. Well, know. just to be an apprentice, 250 hours. I was permitted because I was permitted. It was 2,000 hours. 2,000 hours? That was years ago. Hours of education to get your assistance license, and then you have to get your experience credits. Right now, it's 2,000 within two years. However, the qualifying board is actually looking at reducing that for future. I, should, I read something. 1999. They're taking an hour off, right, for for break. <laughs> If you guys don't know who's speaking back there, why don't you just stand up for a second and tell everybody who I know you don't want to do it, but watch the experience in this room. Well, my name is Rebecca Jones. Um, I'm a certified appraiser. I'm a realtor as an appraiser. I'm an NAR chair for real estate guidance and appraisal. I'm also a certified appraiser. I'm 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 a certified appraiser. I said what, what happens in the uh, convention center stays in the convention center, right? All right. Which I personally think is a really great thing. Really. You know, I, who didn't love calling the appraiser and going, I need 600000 on it and getting it, right? But... It really needs to be separate and independent, right? Now, we're going to talk about that. You bring the CMAs and, and all that stuff, right? What's in the area? What kind of comps should you bring them? Sold, right? You want to bring them sold. And you don't want to bring them sold less than the value, right? right. Bring ones that are equal to or greater than. But let me ask you guys this question. In a purchase transaction, who determines the value of that property? The buyer and the seller? Okay, anybody else? Any other guesses? The bank? Who said the bank? Hi, how are you? The bank? Okay, no problem. Hi. Uh, would you like to put a dollar on your answer? If you're right, you're going to win a dollar. We're in Atlantic City. If someone needs it to appraise and they don't can't, they can't make up the difference if it doesn't appraise. Define what value it won't So the bank? Okay. So you want to put a dollar on your answer? The, wait, the appraiser determines in a purchase price what the value is then? The appraiser determines in a purchase transaction the value of the property. No. All right. Time out. Shh, 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 shh. The, the buyer. Okay, we got a lot of different answers here. What's your name over here that said appraiser? Candy. I'm sorry, can Candy. Hi, Candy. Would you like to put a dollar on your answer? All right, let's see your dollar. There's no gambling here without the money out on the table. I know that trick. Well, I don't have a dollar. What is the Aren't question? The, the, the question way. is, in a purchase transaction, who determines the value of that property? The answer was a, a one to four family property. The, the, the answer was an appraiser, and that is an incorrect answer. All right, well, I'm going to talk about this. Hi. Oh, you need... I don't have my microphone. Which microphone? Now I don't need it. Am I loud? Am I good? You want it on? Yeah, we're recording the session. Oh, yeah, I didn't know that. I'm so sorry. All right, everybody go outside. I had no idea. It's okay. Wow, all right, now I got like five of them. All right. How's that, better? Oh, my God. It, Where's the volume on this thing? Don't go away. Don't run. Or maybe put the mic further away. No, there's no volume on that. All right. I did not know that. I'm sorry. Maybe you're 
How's that better? Yeah. All right, my apologies. Okay, so I'm going to explain it to you. All right. In a purchase transaction, it's in your 75 hour course. It's what the seller is willing to sell for. The buyer is willing to pay in a free and open marketplace where there is no undue pressure on the seller to sell, no undue pressure on the buyer to buy, in what type of a transaction? Arms length transaction. You don't know me, I don't know you. Fair enough? So how much do you want to sell your house for? Much as possible. Five, it's only worth 100000 You want $5 million? Good for you. But as much as possible. Are you with me? I don't know you. Arms length transaction. I'm on the opposite side. How much do I want to buy that house for? As little as possible. Because it's an arms length transaction. You're selling it for $800,000. I offer you seven fifty. dollars whatever. We go back.